Now, we've always tried to uh, ask big questions, uh, maybe uh, ones that you've all asked yourself, at least some of these. Uh, what is life? Uh, you probably all haven't asked yourself whether you can digitize it or not, um, but you should have. There's no difference between digital code and genetic code. And because digital code can move as a electromagnetic wave, basically close to the, uh, the speed of light, we can now move biology at the speed of light. So think about it, a future flu pandemic, we could digitally distribute the new vaccine in seconds around the world, because this is biology now moving at the speed of light. Um, bioweapons, the modern type of bioweapons, are frequency controlled. Yeah. Um, so they don't even start doing any harm before they're not activated. Yeah. We saw that, for example, and this is an interesting story, when uh, we look into what's happening in the US, the sentient world simulation run by the intelligence community that is basically picking up data from transhumanistic technologies of all the people, creating a real world simulation and to turn US citizens in, into bio robots. The DNA Human Genome Project was carried out at the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab where I was a staff scientist for five years. They were tracking people in the lab by the electromagnetic frequency emitted by individuals DNA. In other words, every living thing is an antenna that transmits and receives. We are on an electrical system and the DNA in every living thing has a unique frequency and signal. Believe it or not, that is what they're using, what they're focusing on, and what they're weaponizing to completely control us. People spoke out, people who worked on erecting harp facilities to produce the signals controlling the system. When they spoke out in public that actually the plan is to reverse the signals to turn US citizens in, into bio robots. Um, there was a community of like 200 scientists who um, didn't want to support the, this development anymore and they, they united to a group and started to speak out as a group to the public. Their families were assassinated with uh, uh, radio frequencies and the symptoms of them dying were very, very, very similar to coronavirus death like uh, having flu-like flu symptoms, then going to uh, hospital with lung infection. So apparently um, we do have something that is related to electromagnetic warfare that shows the same uh, symptoms, symptoms. Yeah. like the flu that is easily mistaken. The Human Genome Project was set up and well-funded to experiment and to research and to describe, to quantify and qualify the human genome. And so, um, so what, what is going on? The J. Craig Venture Institute right. um, has their mission as, uh, quote, to forge new life forms, unquote. And they are also involved in manipulated computer code on DNA. What does this mean? Well, Dr. Helen Wallace from Gene Watch in 2002 said, we are in great danger, and she described this as a massive DNA database by the back door. Now, how would they use that? The J. Craig Venter Institute is a CIA and military operation. Well, no surprise and, there, of course. And anyone in science with money and status is supported by these vested interests or they wouldn't get that money. They're giving the answers that the money interests want. And so what he's developing, or that institute is developing under his guidance, is 
the very software of life. And what they're doing is using computing, medicine, technology, and the police state to converge into basically what is creating a totalitarian scientific oligarchy. We now know, just to review, 100% certain this is a man-made virus, man-made origin. This was created in a laboratory because we have the evidence of the tools of insertion used via genetic engineering to put certain proteins into this coronavirus for some purpose that was deliberate and intelligent and driven by human scientists. There is a unique protein to carry out that task. It's programmed when to go on, when to go off. Uh, and it does this based on its structure. It doesn't have consciousness. Uh, it doesn't have a control from a mind or a higher center. Everything a protein does is built in to its linear code uh, derived from the DNA code. The DNA in a nucleus is connected electromagnetically with microtubules in the axon. And you can see on the photograph, it's known that microtubules surround the nucleus and there is an interface, electromagnetic, not mechanical, not chemical, but electromagnetic interface between microtubules and DNA. There's no brain controlling what happens with DNA reading and protein synthesis in your cells. The combination of 100 to trillion cells gives different people different abilities uh, to make wonderful music, uh, to make science advances, uh, to think, but every one of those cells operates in the same fashion. And that means we will be able to decode how the brain functions by understanding these same mechanisms. DNA resonance code and the brain code speak the same language. If you decipher DNA code, you will decipher the brain code. While all other research is prohibited, restricted, unfounded, uh, the brain-computer interface is really well funded these days. Defense agencies all have open programs to develop brain-computer interface. It opens the doors for the mind control. And also it opens the door for technology-assisted telepathy. Let's define the telepathy. Telepathy in Wikipedia is defined as communication from mind to mind without the use of physical senses. So we can use computer to, to link it to the or technology to link it to the one mind and then to another mind and make an interface. The ultimate interface between computers and biology, uh, the digital code and the genetic code have a, a lot in common, something Schrodinger pointed out in 1943, saying it could be something as simple as the Morse code. And digital code, as you know, is a binary code, ones and zeros, and your genetic code is literally a four base code uh, with A, C, G's, and T's. And we can now readily convert in between the two. And we can define life at its most basic level. So things that were a mystery 50, 60, 70 years ago, we understand completely. The new model regards DNA as a stable waveform of information that is not primarily acting through the molecular chemistry and composition, but through the oscillations and coherent acoustic and electromagnetic fields that the atoms and molecules create. An implication is that ultimately DNA could be transferred or transported, let us say teleported, immaterially and non-locally, as a light or laser modulation. Once they have your DNA, they take the DNA and they put the D your DNA code in a supercomputer. And in that supercomputer, they run algorithms that biocode electromagnetic transmissions so they bioresonate with your body. Once they've done that, they can transmit that from satellites or cell towers or aircraft or any number of ways and that signal will only affect you. And what happens is once the resonant frequency is found in the targeted individual and the broadcast frequency matches up with that resonant frequency, those two frequencies interlock and they can be thought of as one frequency or one energy. And what happens is between 
the broadcast frequency and the individual that's receiving the broadcast frequency once it's resonating uh once they are resonating together a a super highway of frequency along which information can be sent is created and so you can think of it just like fiber optic cables that you use to send uh signals over the internet that connect people to the internet it's the exact same thing only a wireless application of that and so once you have connected the targeted individual with the frequency um and they resonate together then you have a perfect uh avenue upon which to send and receive information back and forth and that's exactly how they manipulate someone's thoughts they send voices into someone's head uh they manipulate their emotions they manipulate their behavior and then that's also how they receive back from the in- individual in real time uh the vital signs the emotions the thoughts uh what the person seeing what the person's hearing and then all that information of course is rendered on a computer elsewhere uh via software and it can be monitored and tracked in real time they're also talking about the the uh venter institute they're talking about a synthetic genome or the ability to replicate entire organism hereditary history so these are not simple programs these are very sophisticated and very complex programs now i did an interview on february 3rd 2008 with dr win parker who um has a program called parker's pathways and a very new discovery that i had found just weeks before that interview um Hey, I saw all these press releases coming out, a flurry of them from the UC Berkeley campus, from the Lawrence Berkeley Lab, from the National Science Foundation, from the National Academy of Sciences, and I said, this has to be a huge discovery. And what it was, Jeff, was a laboratory on the UC Berkeley campus had demonstrated with a nanoparticle, they transmitted a well-known song to that nanoparticle and they had a receiver to capture and replay that song that was transmitted from that nanoparticle. I remember so that, hearing it. I remember hearing it. They had it up on YouTube, didn't they? Right. Mm-hmm. And they it's still I think on the the laboratory website on, at UC Berkeley. But I went, "Oh my god. What in the world is the application of that?" Right. This is huge because all those scientific the whole scientific establishment in the US would not be so excited. It sticks to our DNA and our mitochondria that provide all the energy for the body. So, as I was sitting there describing all of this to Dr. Parker, and I was talking about HARP, this is all all integrated into the HARP system. and i was talking about harp this is all all integrated into the harp system um i knew that dr parker when parker was not his real name i knew he was a cia scientist i knew he worked for the us government for the department of defense for the world health organization and the un at different times and i knew that he was a microbiologist who had um he had read uh proposals grant proposals research proposals research papers um he knew the whole field uh because he had to advise the government and so i just sort of said dr parker what is the application of this discovery uh-huh. that nanoparticles are transmitters and he caught his breath and he said well it's to redesign the human genome That's all, huh? <laughs> That's gonna, all. They're going to create a new species is what they're talking about here. Learning to control, manipulate and otherwise influence your DNA. It's all about control. Total, absolute, cradle to grave control. That is total slavery. That is reducing humanity to being robot. That is eliminating spirituality. It's eliminating free choice. It's eliminating everything that makes us human being. It's this totalitarian insane scientific oligarchy that's run by psychopaths 
and they think they can do anything they want to.